good morning everyone so today we will discuss about the one of the most famous uh, eruptive lava flow happened in india that is famously known as deccan traps now the deccan basin uh, refers to an extensive area uh, mainly in the parts of Maharashtra, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh. This basin where the Deccan uh, trap or Deccan trap lavas or the igneous bodies are found, uh, they are basically effusive type. That means they are uh, explored to the surface and form some extrusive in igneous rocks. Mainly the igneous rock is of basaltic type. And these rocks are known as uh, Deccan traps. Now the question comes, why this particular Deccan and trap, particularly trap terminology came to demarcate these kinds of rocks? Because we know there are various kinds or various uh, places on the earth where igneous rocks are found does we call all the igneous rocks as traps obvious answer is no so why did we call this particular uh, effusive igneous rocks as traps the term deccan is came from the uh, terminology dakshin which means south that means these rocks are exposed in the southern half of the Indian Peninsula, particularly in the southern western part of the Indian Peninsula. And the term trap came from the Swedish word trapa, which basically um, means stairs. As you can see that the rocks exposed and traps, these are like stair stairs. So step by step, they gradually decrease in their uh, altitude. So due to this, these stair-like appearance of almost flat-topped, uh, extensive, Effusive igneous rocks occurred mostly in the southern half of the Indian Peninsula. They are named as Deccan traps. So, trap basically came from the uh, staring appearance of the uh, rocks. Here you can also see that the rocks are deposited, effusive rocks are deposited layer after layer and after weathering and erosion, uh, they look like steps. Yeah. Now, this Deccan trap lavas have a wide aerial extent, uh, mainly in the western and southern part of the uh, Indian Peninsula. Mainly, the Deccan traps rocks are found around Maharashtra, parts of uh, Madhya Pradesh uh, near Jabalpur and uh, here also in Gujarat also the Deccan traps lavas are found. So nowadays in these places Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, and Maharashtra, parts of Karnataka, um, parts of Andhra Pradesh also in these areas the Deccan traps lavas are exposed. Now the Deccan traps magmas have erupted through multiple centers. Uh, people thought that is it is erupted through some kinds of uh, fissure eruptions in which there are multiple number of uh, surface openings from which the uh, molten material came to the surface. Also these are uh, came out by some sealed volcanoes. Uh, and form some sealed volcano like structures in the western cards. So, there are not a common 
point from where or not a fixed particular point from where these FEC drops came out and spread but instead of that uh, there are multiple openings from where uh, these FUC igneous rocks came out to the surface and laterally spread now these igneous rock is highly mobile and because of their high mobility they spread a vast area in the surface uh, most of the decan trap lavas are of uh, tholatic type uh, some are alkali basalt uh, some are carbonatites so although there are uh, variations in the lava flows that means the uh, compositional variations found in the lava flows but predominantly uh, the majority of the lavas are of alkali basalt now if we want to call, uh, see the vastness of the decanter lavas why this is so important in indian stratigraphical scenario you can see that in the western central area decan trap lava covers almost 5 lakh square kilometer that's a uh, surficial um, aerial extent in the western part nowadays whatever amount of decan trap lavas are exposed particularly mainly in the uh, western part of india centering maharashtra karnataka Madhya Pradesh, all these areas, they cover almost 5 lakh square kilometer. So it's a huge area covered by these uh, FUC igneous rocks. And if you want to consider the portion of the lavas found beneath the Arabian Sea, then the aerial extent might be 15 lakh square kilometer. So almost three times so what we see in the land surface much more is found beneath the sea almost when we include the portion of the decan traps beneath the arabian sea it becomes three times and it covers almost 15 lakh square kilometer even the decantrap lavas are also found in the eastern coast that is in the bay of bengal when people drill or found, try to look the subsurface stratigraphy in bay of bengal coasts particularly in the uh, andhra pradesh coast they also found the evidence of occurrence of decantrap lava so you can see although the uh, trap lavas erupted uh, in the western and southern part of india but it is covered a far more area due to its high mobility and if we consider the thickness of individual lava flows the individual lava flows thicken from 1 meter to 30 meter and th obviously there are more than one number of lava flows that means it is not a decan trap eruption is not a continuous event but it is a periodical event occurring for a um, significant amount of geological time uh, if we consider the total thickness of decan trap uh, volcanic eruption the total volcanic lava found nowadays is about 3000 meter and among these individual flow is of 1 meter to 30 meter so in different episodes uh, different amount of lava erupted sometimes it is uh, small amount of lava erupted from those fissures sometimes vast amount of lava erupted of those fissures so depending on the amount of lava erupted from those fissures uh, the thickness of individual flow varies now among the different uh, phases of decan trap eruption if we try to divide the phases of decan trap eruption we can divide it into three broad uh, 
divisions uh, the lower trap middle trap and upper trap that is stratigraphy usually older to younger uh, the lower trap is almost 150 meter the middle trap is the most uh, significant effusive phase which is consist of almost 1200 meter and the upper trap is about 450 meter so in broadly three main phases decantive eruption occurs and within these phases there are also um, layerings there are also sub phases but if we consider the uh, timing if we consider the composition if we consider the nature of the eruption depending on those uh, we can broadly differentiate the phases of decantrapse eruption into three uh, divisions lower trap middle trap and upper trap now coming to the structural features what we observed in the decantrapse flows first as i already told you that the decantrapse lavas what it is exposed nowadays is look like uh, foot stairs uh, so that is why that name traps came uh, it's a monotonous uh, body of effusive igneous rocks uh, which form some plateau like hills that means flat top hills with terraced slope that means step by step gradually decreasing the slope now as it is a effusive igneous rock that means the hot molten material very quickly coming into the surface and uh, gets solidified so obviously the rocks of this type is of volcanic igneous rock now due to the sudden chilling and solidification of this molten material the volatile materials that means the uh, gases they gradually trapped within the uh, molten material with subsequent cooling these gases feels pressure and they try to come out towards the low pressure zone that is towards the surface and uh, ultimately comes out in the surface and burst so the gases trapped within this molten meal they formed some uh, hollows when they explode to the surface and these hollows as you all know they are known as uh, amygdules when they are uh, filled up by some um, secondary uh, minerals basically these are those hollows uh, are known as vesicles and this structure is known as vesicular structure which is very common structure found in the uh, volcanic igneous rocks particularly in the basalts uh, in rhyolites also you will find these kinds of structure and when these vesicles are uh, later filled up by some secondary minerals uh, they are known as uh, amygdaloidal structures or amygdules and the basalts is known as amygdaloidal basalts so this kind of structure or these kinds of uh, nature of the basaltic floors in its top surface uh, is very commonly observed in the decantrap uh, lavas or decantrap uh, flows that is obviously at some places uh, several sets of columnar structure or vertical joints are also observed as you can see uh, clearly the vertical joints uh, with their sharply formed hexagonal uh, nature which is commonly known as columnar structure and sometimes in some places some pillow shaped uh, structure within the basaltic flow is also observed which is known as pillow structure <coughs> now the presence of this uh, columnar structure and pillow structure uh, within the basalt trap lavas indicate that part of this decan trap eruption might have occurred in sub aqueous condition um, that means part of this eruption occurred uh, in um, marine condition okay. um, 
where this eruption is occurred beneath the uh, water body now deccan volcanics uh, exhibits both pahoehoe and a type of lavas of various thickness so these are the broad structures which we found in the deccan type lavas now coming to the <coughs> chemical composition or uh, mineralogical variations found in the deccan type uh, lavas as it is suggested that the primary uh, rock types found in the deccan traps are of basaltic type but these basaltic type lavas uh, are of various composition that means their mineralogical composition slightly varies and depending on that they formed different kinds of uh, lavas some are alkali rich some are tholeitic some are carbonate carbonatites and these different kinds of rocks are found within the deccan eruption it is thought that they formed due to the fractional crystallization and differentiation occurred at different centers within the uh, deccan trap deccan basin that means in deccan different uh, fissures uh, different degrees of fractional crystallization occur those crystals they are segregated differentially after segregation these crystals again remelted and mixed with the remaining uh, molten material so due to this fractional crystallization and remelting of the previously formed crystals different uh, and also the partial melting of country rocks okay so due to these factors different degrees of these things um, the composition of the deccan trap lavas varies from place to place but overall uh, the dominant types of rocks found in the deccan traps is of alkali basalt type statigraphically the deccan basin mainly consists of uh, cretaceous to paleocene uh, volcano sedimentary rocks now in all the previous slides i described about the volcanic rocks where from these sedimentary rock schemes as i already told you that is deccan trap eruption is not a continuous phenomena happening in the cretaceous and paleocene periods instead of that it occurs in phases so few million years erupted then there is a stop again few million years erupted then there is a stop so in this like these phases deccan trap eruption basically occurs and between the phases of eruption there is a stop gap when there is no eruption of this volcanic material during that time the natural condition again re-established then all the um, marine sequence or terrestrial sequence or the near um, marine spar those natural processes um, re-established so during that time the sedimentary condition as re-established so some kinds of uh, sedimentary rocks are deposited in different areas in different conditions above those trap rocks so that is why it is known as a volcano sedimentary um, unit because there are phases and within the phases of eruption some kinds of sedimentary rock deposition also occur now statigraphically these deccan trap lavas are found to occur in different areas of the peninsular india above different kinds of rocks in southern part or southern india deccan trap lies found to overlie the uh, archean rocks of kaladgi group the bhima group obviously there is an unconfirmably uh, overlying 
and pardon me there is a spelling mistake this e is will not supposed to be there um, in Kach region that is in the Gujarat this decanter of lavas are found to occur over the Jurassic rocks uh, in Normanda Valley, these decanter of lavas are found over the Cretaceous uh, rocks, that is the Cretaceous bark, bark beds and Cretaceous lamata beds. So you can see that as it is a eruptive lava flow, so in different parts of India, in different uh, basins within the Indian Peninsula, in different edge rocks rocks these decant trap lava flows uh, flow over them and gradually settle and uh, occur over those um, older rocks now as i told you that these decant trap lavas are uh, occurred in phases the eruption occur in phases so depending on that uh, when there is no eruption the sedimentary condition re-established and sedimentation occur so different kinds of sedimentary units are found associated with the decant trap eruption now suppose here it is an um, arbitrary diagram to make you understand about the different kinds of sedimentary units uh, found in association with the decant trap lavas now suppose this is the first decant trap eruption so that is why it is uh, named as the lower trap so below this first decant trap eruption there might be some sedimentary deposits so the sed sedimentary deposits which is covered in its upper boundary by the low decantrap lavas and the sedimentary unit in its lower portion it consists of some uh, other sedimentary rocks these kinds of sedimentary unit this unit is known as infratrap infratrap so infratrap is basically a sedimentary unit which oval lying some kinds of sedimentary rock which occurs above some kinds of sedimentary rock and this unit occurs below the uh, trap lavas so the uppermost portion is capped by the lava flows so obviously this infra trap is older than the first decant trap eruption or fast lava flow so you will find infra trap always uh, older than the lava flow okay next come the inter trap as i already told you that decant trap eruption occurs in phases so this is one phase of eruption the lower trap this is one phase of eruption the upper trap now within these two phases of eruption there is some time when sedimentary conditions uh, again re-establish and during the, that time sedimentation occurs so this sedimentary unit which is bounded on its two sides by the uh, decant trap lavas or any kind of trap lavas of the world basically these uh, terminologies are not only restricted to decan trap lavas but any kind of um, trap lavas of the world uh, so the sedimentary unit which is bounded on is both side by trap lavas is known as intertrapian bed that means this sedimentary unit is sandwiched occurs in between two lava flows so this is one lava flow this is lava once as another lava flow this one is older then comes the sedimentary unit and after the sedimentation again the lava flows and capped the upper part of the sedimentary unit so these kinds of sedimentary unit uh, is known as intertrap 
and the last one which is known as supra trap it is basically opposite of infra trap in infra trap this sedimentary unit is bounded in its upper part by trap lava and lower part by sedimentary sedimentary unit in supra trap this sedimentary unit is bounded in its lower part by trap lavas and the upper part is of another kinds of sedimentary unit so definitely supra trap is the most youngest sedimentary horizon related or associated with the deccan trap lavas so when all the deccan trap eruption ends or uh, it may not be deccan trap it may be any kinds of uh, fuc lava flows when all the eruptive episode ends then after that the immediate sedimentary horizon deposited over those uh, effusive lava flows is known as supra trap so the supra trap this sedimentary unit is bounded in its lower part by uh, trap lavas and its upper part by other sedimentary rocks now keep in mind or be careful that the terminology supra trap infra trap inter trap although the trap terminology is associated with these uh, rock bodies but they are not igneous rocks like the deccan traps so these supra traps inter traps infra traps they are all terminologies related to the sedimentary rocks which are associated which occurs within in close relation with the trap lavas okay so be careful on using these terminologies now what are the causes of deccan trap eruption as you all know that deccan trap eruption is occur close to the kt boundary that is that is it is covering the uh, cretaceous and paleo uh, scene periods so it is thought that deccan trap eruption is one of the cause for the uh, kt boundary mass extinction now why particularly during that time interval this huge or vast uh, lava eruption occurs now there are two theories of this uh, eruptive episode the first one is the uh, impact model where it is thought that a meteorite uh, hit the earth surface uh, you know when you uh, read the kt boundary mass extinction causes causes that the impact of a meteorite crater um, happened during that time and the crater was found near uh, mexico the chicxula crater where all kinds of uh, evidences of impact are found there is another thought or another proposal by some famous uh, geologist that a meteorite also strike close to the western most part of the india and that meteorite when hit the earth surface due to this impact thinning of the crustal portion happened and due to this thinning um, there happened some cracks that means that zone the impact zone is uh, fall under the zone of extension and due to this extension some falls or some cracks occurred and within those cracks within those falls uh, the eruption of the mold uh, the molten material of the mantle they basically came out and this impact site is proposed to occur in the arabian sea which is famously known as siva crater but this is something controversial uh, because uh, most of the geologists uh, 
they did not accept the uh, occurrence of Shiva Kirtan. They basically thought that that depression, uh, that is the, that crater like depression found in the Arabian Sea that is formed due to some topographical region that is not formed due to some impact event. Now, if it is thought that an impact have, uh, happened in the uh, western part of India, then due to the this impact, there must be some other evidences. So, if impact at all originally happened in the western part of India, then due to this impact, the quartz grains are shocked. So, the quartz grains shows these kinds of different uh, deformation, and these they show these kinds of um, color interference color. So you can see that it almost looks like a muscovite grain, um, higher order variegated interference color. So this, but this is basically a quartz grain. So due to this impact, the quartz grain becomes shocked. So it shows uh, these kinds of colors. So these are known as shocked quartz, and they are very good indicators of impact. Another evidence which is associated with the impact event that is known as glass ferules. These are basically some tiny crystals. Here you can see the scales, almost 300 micrometer. So very tiny is uh, globular bodies, which is formed from the uh, crystallization of the uh, dust which is thrown into the atmosphere due to, to the impact of the meteorite. So when a meteorite hit the earth surface, the dust particles blown into the atmosphere and gradually in the atmosphere, these dust particles, they collide with each other and form these kinds of uh, tiny um, balls which are known as glass ferules. So these two are firm evidence of any kinds of impact. But as I already told that peoples are not um, believe in the occurrence of Siva crater in the Arabian Sea. One reason is they thought there is no crater. That is a structural uh, low formed due to some uh, due to some other kinds of causes. Uh, another thing, if impact happened at any con any place of the earth, then these things, soft quartz, glass ferules, have to be found in the surrounding rock bodies. In Chicxulub crater surrounding rocks, people readily found these kinds of rocks soft quartz just found in the surrounding rocks of Mexico, Italy and other areas. And glass ferules are also found but in India, particularly in the peninsular part of India, nowhere these kinds of uh, soft quartz or glass ferules found in the rock bodies. So the impact model for the cause of Deccan volcanism is not so valid. The second model which is thought to be the cause for Deccan type volcanism is the hotspot model. Now you know already that the position of India which is nowadays in the uh, tropical part of the northern hemisphere is not here previously. You know that during the uh, Permian time, India occurred in the southern hemisphere almost about 60 degree latitude. So from that position, uh, from the 60 degree south position, gradually the Indian plate uh, moves towards north and collide with the uh, Eurasian plates. Now during its northward journey during the northward journey of the Indian plate, this Indian plate moves over some hotspots. 
what are hotspots hotspots are some uh, localized places uh, localized points in the earth this occurs particularly in the um, lower mantle and whenever some moving plate because plate consists of the lithosphere that is the crust and the upper part of the upper mantle mantle so whenever above these hotspots the moving plate is going or pass passing above the hotspot points um, the hotspot points are fixed the plates are moving so plates are going pass above the hotspots due to the immense heat stored in those points the portion of the plate touching those or the portion of the plate above those hotspots they suffer intense heating and due to this intense heating the plates becomes thinner and gradually eruptions occurred in those places so it was now established that during its northward journey the western part of india is passing over this reunion hotspot here and the position of this reunion hotspot is fixed so when the indian plate is above this reunion hotspots crustal thinning occur and eruption occurs so after passing the reunion hotspot again the eruption of lavas they uh, ends now if we consider uh, the continuous eruption or continuous thinning of these hot spots so gradually with time you can see there are some volcanic chains and with time these volcanic chains are increasing in age from the hot spot towards the north so when this point passing the reunion hotspot eruption occurs here then comes the indian plate so during uh, 65 million years ago indian plate was here uh, and eruption occurs there then gradually there are some volcanic islands which successively pass the reunion hotspot and eruption occurs so you can see the rocks found in this place is 2 million years old here it is 8 million years old 35 million years old 49 million years old 57 million years old and 65 million years old that is the taken traps so gradually the volcanic rocks if you see volcanic rocks are found to be increasing in age from reunion hotspot towards the Deccan trap lavas that means all these points are successively pass over the hotspot points and during their passing over the hotspot points uh, successive uh, eruptions occurs on those areas so this is the most acceptable model or most acceptable cause nowadays thought to be the uh, main cause for the contribution during the uh, kt boundary transition now along with this taken trap eruption another significant trap lava found in the uh, eastern half of the india that is the rajmahal trap which is occurs uh, during the mesozoics also uh, about 117 million years old this rajmahal trap points is also occurred due to the uh, passing of indian plate over another hotspot which is known as kerguelen hotspot which is occurred there so you can see that the orientation of indian plate is like this so here the indian plate will be like this so gradually at 170 million years ago the indian plate goes above the kerguelen hotspot so similarly 
thinning of plates occur and eruption occurs forms the Rajmol trap at about 65 million years ago the western part of India goes above the reunion hotspot uh, thinning of plates occur and eruption occurs and like this volcanic chains in the eastern side there are also volcanic chains uh, 38 million years 43 million years 50 million years 82 million years increasing in age from the present day Kerguelen hotspot to the present day Rajmahal trap location so similarly these areas when they passed uh, successively over the Kerguelen hotspots they also suffer the volcanic eruption so nowadays both for Deccan trap eruption as the Raj and the Rajmol trap eruption, this hotspot model is the most acceptable uh, model for uh, or most acceptable model which causes the um, FUC volcanic eruption found in the western southern part of India and also for Rajmol trap in the eastern part of the India. So that's all. That's a brief uh, introduction or brief uh, description of Deccan Trap eruption, Deccan Trap lava. Thank you.